You know, the phrase that a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, a moving image is actually worth 10,000 words. If you were flying in the mitochondrion, it would be like flying over the Grand Canyon. It would be the most spectacular landscape you could imagine because you have these massive folds going up and down, studded with many thousands upon thousands of proteins doing all of these amazing processes. And we also know that there are these big tubular extensions. Molecular animation is the ability to bring proteins to life, bring molecules to life. It's really taking something that we can't see, um, something that's way too small for us to see, and bringing it to life in a way that I think is really difficult to do using any other means. My name is Janet Owasa and I am a molecular animator. The world of science is converging with the worlds of video games and film. I, I think it's a gold rush right now because a lot of the things that we have shown have never been shown. That perspective of, for example, viewing a motor protein moving along a microtubule has never been shown. There's biochemical data that supports it. But to have that perspective where you're there looking at the thing has never been shown before. Building on decades of research and mountains of data, scientists and animators are now recreating in vivid and sometimes jaw-dropping detail the complex inner machinery of living cells. So what is really the difference now with what we had before? I think now we can do these representations that are uh, three-dimensional, that are based on real structures at very high resolution. So these are movies at the molecular level, which we try to bring the full representation as best as we can of the real process. Scientists like Tomas Kirkhausen at the Harvard Medical School are using these techniques to better understand how proteins interact and how the processes that keep us alive actually work. Before were drawings on a PowerPoint level, if you wish, right? They abstracted what one was thinking, but they, it was very hard to really present the, a representation of the actual molecules, the complexity of the process. I think that's an enormous difference now. Dr. Kirkhausen collaborates with a new breed of scientist animator, like Janet Iwasa, a cell biologist by training, who have harnessed the technologies of cinema for science. I actually went to Hollywood for three months to learn this software, um, to be able to learn how to do these animations as part of my postdoc. All of my other classmates were, were young guys who were there to enter into in the entertainment industry, essentially. Um, to, they wanted to work at places like Pixar. And meanwhile, for me, you know, I was, I was thinking about molecules and proteins. Perhaps the biggest name in molecular animation is Drew Barry, a cell biologist whose visualizations have been featured in major art galleries around the world. The primary goal of my animations is to explain biology, to show students of biology what it is the science is all about. To strip away all the fancy language that scientists use to describe their work and just to show people what is happening down at the microscopic scale. It is an accurate representation of, if you could see it, it would look something like this. Other scientists are using these tools to bring the majesty of these invisible processes to the public. We're all visual animals, you know, let's face it. Robert Liu, a cellular biologist at Harvard, heads up the BioVisions project, which four years ago created what some consider one of the most popular science videos of all time, a three-minute visualization called The Inner Life of a Cell. The only way I can describe it is to think of it in terms of cinematic terms. What we tried to do was to create the sensation of being there. We think a lot about the angle such that it's like your perspective as if you were a microscopic entity that's actually sitting there in the environment experiencing what's happening. The sequel to The Inner Life of a Cell, a new animation called Powering the Cell Mitochondria, was released online this October 
Though produced for medical students, it has generated wide public interest. The video takes viewers inside the complex molecules that convert food into energy. We need to communicate to the public what's happening at the molecular level, at the cellular level, at the whole organism, at the whole ecosystem level, what is happening with the living world. And I think visualization is, a, is going to be absolutely fundamental for that.